What's up, Internet? Chris Burge is back with another market update for you today. Now, last I left you guys, we were looking at how momentum had kind of stalled last week on Thursday. Let's go ahead and dive right in and see what has happened since then. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on the S&P 500 here. And as you can see, that momentum has gone ahead and continued its way down. So last week, we were looking at how we had come down here. And then for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday last week, we were basically just kind of sitting neutral, right? We gapped down on Wednesday kind of didn't have really any decisions after the gap, right? We came down, but then ended up trading higher, then came down again, basically just trading sideways for three days. Then on Monday, we gapped down again, and Monday's candle was a lot more strong, a lot stronger to the downside. We had a very uh, consistent sell-off, I guess I would say, right? A very, a very strong sell-off here, uh, selling our way downtown. And then today we opened up a little bit higher, tried to trade higher, ultimately got smacked down and ended up closing down here just below 4,400. Now 4,400 is a pretty important level on the S&P 500. It is of course a nice round number. So we've got the psychological uh, barrier there, but we've also seen how, you know, there's been a little bit of price action here before, some resistance there, some support in the past, a lot of price action here around 4,400 in the past as well. We've had gaps around this area here a couple times before as well, and just generally a lot of price action, some resistance turned into support, some support turned into resistance, and so on and so forth. So a pretty important level here on the S&P 500 at 4,400. That being said, I don't really think that we're likely to find support here. It's always possible, but uh, it certainly doesn't seem like momentum is slowing down to the downside. I mean, it's, it's a little bit slower, but compared to the second half of last week, we're definitely heading on down. So my guess is we are likely to continue on down from here. I think we're probably going to experience selling for most of this week. Now, do keep in mind that this is a shorter week this week. The markets are closed on Monday because it's a bank holiday. It's Holy Week. So uh, Friday, everything's going to be closed. So that means we've only got four days that the market is open this week which basically means all of our trading will be concluded by the time that I come at you again on Thursday for the next market update. But I think that we are likely to head on lower by that point. I don't think we're done selling off on Tuesday. I think the momentum is a little too far to the bearish side at the moment. I wouldn't really expect us to start finding some pretty major support until we get closer to 4,300. I think we've got another 100 points or so to fall on the S&P 500. Does that mean we're going to do that this week? No, I think that would be kind of extreme. I don't think we're going to fall that far this week. It's always possible, but uh, I think we're more likely to kind of hit this area around 4,300 sometime over the next few weeks. Don't necessarily think it's going to be this week, but I do think we're likely to head lower before we head you know, back above our, our highs here around 4640. And I do think we're likely to probably get closer to 4300 before finding any meaningful support. So that's what I'm anticipating here for the S&P 500. Let's go ahead and see what we've got on the NASDAQ here. Zoom in here. And as you can see, again, pretty important level here on the NASDAQ, just above 34,200, or not the NASDAQ, sorry, I keep saying that. I mean the Dow Jones. You guys can see what I'm looking at, right? We're looking at the Dow Jones here. So obviously continuing selling on down here on the Dow Jones. Had a little bit more bullishness last week, Thursday and Friday, but ultimately was overcome Monday and Tuesday by selling pressures this week. So we did head on back lower. Now we are basically right at the lows from last week's, uh, what was that, Thursday? Thursday's lows last week is basically where we closed today, and there has been quite a bit of trading activity around this area as well. So wouldn't be too surprising if we had a little bit more resistance here. Resistance just meaning uh, friction, right? So a little bit more friction on the way down here, a little bit stickiness around this 34,000 to 34,200 price area on the way down, as opposed to the S&P 500, where I think we've got uh, a little bit more of an easier ride on down. Now, that being said, you know, we've got lots of support here on the Dow Jones around this area, 34,200, quite a bit of price action there looking left, but also right at 34,000. So if we kind of just translate these levels over a bit, especially around that 34,000, but really just this range here in this box, you know, we've had support and resistance there so many times in the past that I think it's definitely likely that we're going to go ahead and see some of that happening on the way back down again as well. Of course, it doesn't have to. I could be wrong, and maybe we just see some gigantic downward candles that just blow right through that, but I think that's less likely. Always possible, but less likely, right? And as traders, we have to play the probabilities, not the possibilities. So here we are looking at the probabilities for the Dow Jones. I think probably we're headed lower. I think probably there's going to be some friction between here and 34,000, but ultimately we'll have to see whether we are able to break on down below 34,000. I think we're likely to. Whether that happens this week or not remains to be seen. Uh, I could definitely see us getting stuck above 34,000, not really able to break below that. 
by Thursday this week. But I think if we do continue heading on down, then definitely over the next few weeks, I would likely see that broken and we're probably heading on down lower as well. So that's the Dow Jones. Now everything's been going down here, except let's go ahead and take a look at, what am I doing here? The Russell 2000. So Russell 2000, beautiful little index here. Absolutely love it. After we had this kind of head fake breakout here coming right back down below 2100. This was kind of my signal once we got down here to put an iron condor on the ETF here, the e the, uh, the IWM, which basically the, an iron condor is just an options trading strategy that makes money as long as a stock is trading between two levels. So as long as the IWM is trading between these two levels here, then that's where I'll make my money on this trade. And it's just a, it's a nice little trade because the Russell 2000 has just been trading sideways. I've been talking about it for as long as I've been doing market updates uh, for basically all of 2021. The Russell 2000 pretty much just traded sideways ranging between two levels. Now in 2022, it seems to be doing the exact same thing just with lower levels, right? So we moved down here to between 2100 and between 1900. And as you can see, today's candle, we struggled to get a little bit higher. We didn't go any lower, right? So Monday's candle, was definitely the lows of this latest swing so far. And we tried to go higher today, but ultimately that got smacked back down and we're down here basically right in the middle of this range here, right? Between 2100 and 1900. So I love that sitting right in the middle. That is where an iron condor makes its most money. So that is beautiful. Absolutely love that. That being said, I think we're probably more likely to see a bit of a bottom here and, uh, you know, maybe a, a bit more of a sideways to even slightly bullishness in the Russell 2000 compared to the other indexes we just looked at. The Dow Jones so far has the most amount of support. Uh, the S&P 500, I think we're more likely to keep on sliding down. And that means that NASDAQ is also probably going to be sliding on down as well, since that kind of makes up the majority of the S&P 500 is the, uh, you know, the biggest names in the S&P 500 are the biggest tech names, right? So they have have the, the biggest effect on the S&P 500 since it's a market cap weighted index. So I think the Russell 2000 is the most likely to uh, be, how do I want to say this? Let's say the least bearish <laughs> out of the out of the markets right now, right? And we definitely had a, a nice run up during the day on the Russell 2000, wasn't able to sustain that and came back down for sure. But, you know, if we kind of look at this price action, we had really, really strong red candles. And then those have just kind of been slowing down, right? The, the momentum started off fast and then kind of started slowing down today. You know, we tried to get higher and ultimately came back down. But more or less, we've turned sideways at this point, right? If you just take a look at these candles here, it's basically just come down and started to turn sideways. So this is the least bearish looking of the ones we've seen so far. So I'm the most neutral on the Russell 2000, even slightly bullish with that uh, that candle wick right there. But uh, you know, by no means do I think we're necessarily heading up. I just think we're much more likely to find support here than we are on the other major indices. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and take a look at tech. Last of all, we'll start with semiconductors. Semiconductors at a very interesting point right now. As you can see, we're basically right at the lows for the year. So we've basically come down and we are retesting those lows again. If we break through this, I think definitely some darker days for tech ahead. As you can see, you know, if we look left, we've got some more um, support coming in down here at around 2850-ish. So definitely there is another pocket of support down here to be had. But if we do break through the lows of this year, I definitely think we are likely to come down and retest those levels. Hopefully we won't, you know, hopefully we'll be able to kind of sustain this uh, the support level here. You can see we did open higher, right? We gapped up higher here uh, for the day on semiconductors, but ultimately ended up closing even lower than yesterday's close. So that's not a terribly bullish picture. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, at best, we're kind of neutral since we didn't really break through our uh, our lows for the year. But it's definitely not looking pretty. So we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of days. Of course, I'll be back on Thursday to give you an update on this. But at the moment, we are just sitting right there at support. And we have to see whether that is going to hold or not. This candle doesn't make it look too likely that we're going to hold, but you never know. So let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. Last of all, and again, pretty similar to semiconductors, except the context, right? The, the candles are looking pretty similar. Again, we had, you know, we started off higher here, ultimately ended up closing lower than yesterday's close. But the on semiconductors, right, we were playing around down here right at the lows for the year. On the NASDAQ, though, we've got plenty of room to run before we hit the lows of the year again. So I think it is probably likely that we'll continue on heading down, especially looking at the S&P 500 and just kind of the rest of the market right now. That being said, we are at a nice support level here, just around uh, 14,000 here on the NASDAQ. Obviously, lots of price action here before in the past as well. But I think it is not very likely to hold. I think it is more likely that we're going to go and head on down here a little bit. And we might find support before the very bottom here, just above 13,000. But 
you know, I, I think we are headed that way. Whether we actually do get all the way down here between, you know, 13,200 and 13,000 ish, somewhere in this area, that remains to be seen. Even if we do hit that, it could take weeks or months. You know, I'm, this box is not a timing indicator. This is just to show you uh, the area that I'm looking at here. So, you know, this could take a while. We could see some. Um, you know, some more rallies before heading on back down. But I just want to make it clear that I don't necessarily think that this is a very strong support level. Uh, you know, if we look back here, like this is totally different price action from what we're seeing right now. So it doesn't look terribly promising with just these couple candles right now. But of course, we just have to wait and see what happens for the rest of the week. So that is it for the major indices. Let me go ahead and take a look at Deep Sky and see what it's thinking. I'll pull that up in just a second here. All right, so I got Deep Sky pulled up here. As you can see, it is definitely forecasting bullish across the board, which is interesting. I don't think this worked out for most of the major indexes, except uh, the Russell 2000 was the only one that ended up closing a little bit higher. I think most of these indices closed lower than yesterday's close. So uh, definitely a little bit, uh, I would say, divergence between what, what the Deep Sky AI is looking at and what I'm seeing with my, my human eyes here. Yeah, definitely closing lower here on the NASDAQ. That being said, I mean, Deep Scott did a, a pretty decent job here. From the open, this would have looked pretty right, you know. I think we, we opened higher today and uh, ultimately ended up being dragged down lower. But from the open, it definitely looked like we were going to have a, a pretty decent day, but that ended up not being the case. So I wouldn't be surprised if we log into Deep Sky tomorrow and the AI has basically reversed this and things are looking a lot more bearish. I think once it factors in the data from today, it's going to change its tune a little bit now that we did have a lower close on most of these indices. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here. I would expect these to turn bearish by the time I get back to you on Thursday, but hey, maybe I'll be wrong and uh, maybe everything does end up finding support here and we had on back up. I just find that a little less likely. So that is it for me today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this market update. Make sure to like the video. It definitely helps out the algorithm. If you're not sub subscribed to, man, talking is hard. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, there we go. I got through it. <laughs> then go ahead and subscribe and you will be getting a notification for my next market update on Thursday. And that'll be the last one for the week here as there is no trading on Friday. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys have a fantastic short week of trading here. I'll be back on Thursday. Have a great day.